Whoa, hi guys. <laughs> Sorry for the rocking and rolling there. Get you straightened out. There we go. <laughs> How we doing? It's been a minute since I've seen you. We've all had a weekend. How was yours? Mine was not long enough. <laughs> they never are. They never are. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Holly. So good to see you. First two in the room. So there's Joy, Kathleen. <laughs> oh gosh, you guys, it is Monday, Monday Maker. Monday Makers are fun. You know, we like to keep it light and easy on Monday Maker, Maker Monday, whichever way you want to say it. I don't think it makes any difference one way or another. <laughs> some weeks I say it one way, some weeks I say it the other way. But we all know, we all know, we all know that it means that we're going to do a, a simple, fun project on a Monday evening to kind of get you started and headed off into the week with a little bit of inspiration. That is always the goal. And tonight, I've got lots of inspiration for you really excited to kind of talk through some of the stuff because uh there's brand new well it's not necessarily brand new so the collection is still the same the um color envy collection you guys remember when the color envy collection very first came out some of you that um have been with us a while do remember some of you who are new let me explain what the uh, color envy is all about so beetle has come out with a little group of wire here that is multicolored wire. I don't know if I can hold them all in my hands <laughs> or not. We're going to see what happens here. So Beetalon has come out with artistic wire that is multicolor, meaning that it kind of melts from one color into another color. And there are six of these to choose from, right? And they're fabulous. This is still a relatively new Beetalon product. Um, it's only been around for, I want to say two years, but I don't think it's been quite two years yet. Not quite two years, I don't think. But regardless, it is one of Beetalon's top sellers guys this is one of the coolest new products in wire that has come out in a very very long time and so because Beetalon and jesse james speeds have a really great relationship with each other the guys and gals the team at jesse james speeds decided how cool would it be to put together some little bead mixes that marry very well with each one of the multicolor wire choices so you've got one that is a let's see this one is a blue red and gold this actually happens to be the one we're going to use today there is a pink black and green and that green is more on like a teal kind of seafoam green side it's not like christmas tree green right that's really super pretty there is a brown green gold this is another one of my favorites particularly for this time of year this is such a pretty pretty mix you know color mix on wire um silver black and gold another one this is a really good one for this time of year too and red gold and black which is gorgeous and then last but not least is the silver black and green so those are the wire choices and the wire choices come in three different gauges so you can get those in 18 gauge 20 gauge and 22 gauge so it gives you kind of a wide variety of sizes and then you can pick out your favorite Jesse James Beads color envy mix the little bead mix to go with it which is so much fun we're going to use one today we're going to use the adventure awaits and the red blue and gold wire combo look at that yes 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 so that's what we're going to do for today's project i'm going to show you just really really quickly we're just going to kind of pair the bead mixes and the wires just so that you get a um, an idea of what they look like i know you can see them on the computer but it's a little bit different when you can like actually open up the container and like really look at it side by side with the wire, right? So that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I do feel like for those of you who are brand new and for those of you who this is your first, um, you know, your first introduction to the Color Envy, this is, this is a prime opportunity to kind of to go through it. <coughs> So, lots of people here already. Hi, guys. Color therapy for your Monday. I would agree with that. Everybody needs a little color therapy. 
Love it. So if I've not said hello to you just yet, hello to everyone. I'm so happy that you are here. I just kind of jumped right in. I, um, you know, a lot of times I wait for people to get, you know, to start filing in, but I was, I was on fire tonight. <laughs> so I just kind of went with it. Um, so let me rewind just a little bit because we do have housekeeping. We always have housekeeping that we need to take um, care of before we get started and you guys it's monday so that means that the weekly deals are brand new weekly deals for those of you who are new over on the jesse james speeds page the weekly deals roll over on mondays and you always get at least one sometimes all the way up to three different deals for the entire week and then you can look to next monday for a brand new deal to come through so what are the deals for this week you might ask i'm so happy you asked because i can tell you hold on <laughs> i grabbed the wrong piece of paper so the weekly deals for this week are buy four get one free on findings guys the findings are all of your bits and pieces and odds and ends the things that hold your jewelry together right and so that's one of the things that makes jesse james beads such a great place to shop for beads because you can get everything you need to create a great piece of jewelry so you can get your jewelry um, you can get well, well you can make your jewelry you can get your beads you can get your wire you can get your findings you can get your charms and your clasps and your pendants all in one place and this is a really cool opportunity this weekly deal is a great one to kind of stock up on things that maybe you're running low on I know that this time of year I don't know if you can see but there's a black like box back there behind me that has all those little drawers and they're all labeled and I was putting the labels on those drawers this weekend and realizing as I was going through there like how low I am on certain things and it's funny because different times of the year I get lower on different findings right this time of year because the holidays are coming and I'm preparing for gift giving. I'm out of stretch cord and I'm, I'm running really low on ear wires because I make a ton of stretch bracelets. They make the perfect gift and I make a lot of earrings. So I go through a lot of ear wires and having a, you know, having some organization makes it a little bit easier for me to tell. But for those of you who who don't have organization and mine's just for show. I mean, really and truly, it's like it's a hot mess around here, okay? <laughs> but this is a really great deal, bottom line, to kind of stock up on those things that we do tend to run low on, particularly this time of year when we're kind of scrambling to make jewelry. So buy four, get one free, and the, the coupon code for that is FINDINGS. So you won't, you won't forget that one. The next one is the free rose beads and they're called, feel, I think that it says feeling rosy over here. I want to be sure. Yeah. Free feeling rosy beads with your $39 cart. Let me show these to you. If you, if you are unfamiliar with these guys, these are so pretty. We've made a ton of earrings out of these. Um, it's this rose bead right here. It's a metal bead with metal flowers all over, well, metal roses all over it. You can get them in a ton of different colors. And guys, the paint job on these, that's, I, and I believe that's what the color is. I, I don't, I mean, I guess I'm just making an assumption here, but the color of the roses is so intense. It's, it's almost like velvet. The blue ones are my favorite, but I, I'm like in love with all of them. Let me show you the, a red pair. They're so pretty. Look at that. Look at the intensity of the red. Is that not gorgeous? Reminds me of Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> right? In the Rose Garden. Gosh, they're so pretty. So that is one of the deals. And then last but not least, and this is a deal you don't have to have. Oh, wait, let me back up. You got to have a coupon code for that. The code for the rose beads is ROSY. That's another easy one to remember. And then last but not least is the two is two times the loyalty points on the School of Magic beads. And the School of Magic beads, guys, those are the ones that were inspired by uh, Harry Potter and all of the, the magic houses. Um, even if you're not a Harry Potter fan, you're not into that, These this bead collection is absolutely stunning. One of my all-time favorites from Jesse James Beads, um, at, really just gorgeous, gorgeous collection. And so you can get two times the loyalty points on that. For those of you who don't know what the loyalty points are, let me break that down for you real quick. So when you go to the Jesse James Beads website, in the lower right-hand corner, if you're looking at it on a computer, you're gonna see the Love Club and there's like a little arrow. You're gonna push on that little arrow 
and it's going to take you to a pop-up that says introducing the love club where you can earn points from your purchases that you can then take and turn into vouchers that you can use any way you want to on the site so you make a purchase every dollar equals one voucher and then you can save those up and use those on beads it's like free money for beads right every time you spend you get more it's this really cool cycle, <laughs> right? Lots and lots of fun. In order to do that though, you have to create an account. So if you've not created an account with the Jesse James Beads uh, page, not the Facebook page, but the actual shop online, head over to the Jesse James Beads webpage, create an account. It just takes a couple of minutes while you're there. Go ahead and sign up for the newsletter because that's where you're going to get all of your insider information. You're going to know ahead of time what new deals, what is featured, what new and fun things are coming up, as well as links to the projects. Guys, all of the projects that we do here on Facebook Live then get moved over to YouTube where you can watch them over and over and over again, and you can refer back to them if you need some inspiration. All of that information is going to come to you through the newsletter and we're not going to spam you we're not going to you know unnecessary emails uh, it's just quick and simple sign up sign up for the love club get your emails going and you're good to go you don't want to miss anything i promise it's totally worth it only takes about 60 seconds to do no problem all right <clears throat> wait a minute now, see, I've been doing business and y'all are carrying on about wine and chocolate. How am I missing this conversation? Where am I? Who's sending the wine and chocolate my way? And can you send chocolate? I think we're back. Oh, goodness. I'm telling you, some nights, no problems. Other times, <laughs> it's just one thing after another with Facebook. I'm telling you, <laughs> me and Facebook, we have this relationship. I didn't say it was a good one. <laughs> Oh goodness, let's hope that was just the only one for the night that's going to happen, right? I've already had my internet provider people out here. <laughs> okay, you guys, so for tonight's project, like I mentioned before, um, this is an easy one. It's not a super hard project, but it's a really cool way to show off your very, very favorite beads and your favorite artistic wire multicolor um, to go with it. I froze on your TV screen. That is terrifying. I am so sorry that my face is frozen on your screen. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, let's get down to it. Let's take a look at the wire. Let's look at the beads and then let's put together a bracelet, right? Let's do it, shall we? All right, friends. Okay, so I mentioned already that this is the bead mix that we are going to use for tonight. I am going to go ahead and pour this one out. Um, with the other ones, I'm not... Let me move you down a little bit. I'm not going to pour them all out. I'm just going to kind of hold them up next to the wire. But since this is the one that we're going to use, I want you to just take a look at that color palette. It's so pretty. So Adventure Awaits, that's this one, and it goes with the blue, red, and gold. Can you see how perfect, look how perfect that matches. I've got two 18 gauge wire here. I don't know why, here's a 20. <laughs> but you can see how perfect, like the bead team, they know what they are doing. Right, that is gorgeous. Yolanda, I completely agree, because it is so not me, and I always apologize, I'm like, I'm so sorry, it's totally not me, but I'm sorry for, um, you know, Facebook not getting their little ducks in a row, because they totally should. <laughs> if it were me, I would have my ducks in a row. <laughs> All right, so this is the color palette and the wire that we're gonna be using for tonight. I'm gonna sit this one over to the side for just a second, and let's discuss some of the other ones, um, just so that you can kind of get a, a little sneaky peeky here. So this one is Aurora Borealis. Like I said, I'm not going to dump it all out, but I'm going to kind of separate some of it so you can get kind of a, a good little picture here of this color palette. This gorgeous, like teal blues, the silver, the purple. This guy, gosh, this is such a pretty bead. Look at this one. 
Oh, that's so pretty. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It is just so pretty. There are little check glass leaves in here. I love, I'm so in love with check glass leaves. This time of year, I want to use them in everything. I just, I'm so, so in love with them. There are some flowers in here, some flower charms, just really, really beautiful. And you can see how perfectly it goes with the wire. This one is the pink, black, and green. And I'm telling you that it's perfect. It's absolutely perfectly matched. How gorgeous is that? This pearl. I mean, just look at it. So good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so, so good. All right. Somebody says chiefs in big letters. Are you trying to get to my attention? <laughs> that is one surefire way to do it. <laughs> Oh, Randy says, thank goodness you're here. I've been looking for some inspiration today. Girl, I got you. I got you. Look at that. So good. Okay, so I'm going to sit that one to the side. Let's pick another one real quick. So this one is wild side. This is so pretty too. First of all, look at this. Yes, I love it. I love the big beads. Like I'm all about it. I'm all about it. There are some large hole beads in here. Guys, these look so good on leather. The faux suede lace, the real, you know, the real deal pieces of leather, whatever you want to use them on. There is black in here. There's brown in here. There are these feather accents, the little charms, the tassels. It's just so pretty. So, so pretty. So this one goes with the silver, gold, and black. And again, it's perfect. It's just perfect. So good so good <laughs> really is such a beautiful mix oh by the way this one has the cubes in it I love cube beads I love them I love them all right so that's that one if you're looking for some neutrals this is a really good one and it's not boring neutrals right I mean that's that's some gorgeous beads I'm just I'm just saying all right this is red queen this one is fabulous as well there's some red check glass and look at the red check glass like that's bright and in your face so gorgeous there is a a big boy in here I'm, I have a whole little stash of big boys I love them got some black bohos which is crazy cool these guys so you've got lots and you've got the pops of brass in here these like kind of that like checkerboard print on there these are so cool and they go with the red gold and black which is absolutely perfect 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 so good so so good am i frozen again you guys because you're going by just fine i'm sorry that i'm frozen <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right, the last two are kind of green. Well, I mean, they are green, but there are, there are two different kinds of greens. So this one is green mamba, and gosh, it's so pretty. Look at that. Do you see that? Mm hmm Now, I'm talking a gorgeous pair of earrings right there. There are leaves in this one, this gorgeous green boho, and there's two of those. Just really, really beautiful. So this one has lots of green and black. There are pops of silver in here. Guys, there are these little beads that I, I have been collecting that look like mermaid tail. They have that shimmer to them. I have a little collection of these guys. So when I saw that these were in there, I was really excited really awesome oh you guys were talking about the chiefs colors with this okay i got you now <laughs> i was like why are we saying chiefs i totally get it i totally get it so this one goes with the Started with our projects. I feel like we could take a little time tonight to go through all of these just because our project I feel like is going to go by pretty quickly. Um, it's it's not a super hard project and I don't think it's going to take very long so I don't mind to look at gorgeous beads while we're here. So this one is called Canyon and this is another one that is absolutely gorgeous. You've got these gorgeous green bohos in here. This green color I'm all about it. And it, what makes this one even more amazing is that there are green cubes. 
Yes, I love it. I love it. There are some Fimo beads in here that I'm obsessed with, of course. These little spacers, well, they're not really spacers. They're these little flowers, the brass flower beads. These are some of my favorites. I love these. I do have a tiny little collection of these as well. These look really beautiful as accents. Um, they look great on a bracelet, by the way. I really, really love those with the little flower. And then you've got your pops of metal in here. So you've got some antique copper. Oh, this one has this, the triangle tassels, yes. Um, you've got your antique brass. So you've got some antique brass butterflies. Look at that beautiful heart. There is some antique copper in here as well as the brass color. And this mix would even look really beautiful with silver. So you really can kind of get away with anything with this one. And it goes with the brown, green, and gold. And again, it's just perfect. They were perfectly matched. All right, so I'm gonna put all these over to the side now that you've had a little peek at all of them and we're gonna get to, uh, what's a Fimo bead? So a Fimo bead is actually made out of Fimo, which is a kind of polymer clay. So it's a really soft, it's a soft bead. It's not really squishy. I mean, I guess you can squish on it a little bit. I always wanna squish them. They're really not squishy. They're just nice and soft. And they always have such beautiful patterns on them. This looks like hibiscus flowers, like the big hibiscus leaves. I don't know if you can tell or not. It's just really beautiful. All right. Let's get to it, shall we? Okay. So for today's project, you're just going to need a couple of things. This is really not going to take a lot of materials. So you're going to need some of the 18 gauge wire. I'm using the blue, red, and gold. And you're going to need... Guys, the measurements for this is a little different for everybody, okay? So this is what I this is what I like to recommend. I recommend that before you even take it off of the spool, okay, you create a wrapped loop on one end. That's going to take up about an inch and a half of your wire once you trim off the end. You want to give yourself about nine inches, okay? And you're going to need to adjust that. If you need a smaller bracelet, you're going to make it a little bit smaller. If you need a larger bracelet, obviously you're going to make that a little bit larger. Or you can stick with the nine inch measurement. And if you want to adjust the length of the bracelet, you can always add or get rid of jump rings okay that's always a really good way to adjust and if you you know if you wanted to do like an extension chain if this was for a customer that's a good way to make up that difference too if you're not really sure but if you give yourself about nine and a half nine inches of the 18 gauge wire you're going to have plenty it's going to make about a seven and a half inch bracelet at the end okay then as far as the 20 gauge wire is concerned you're going to need probably about 16 inches of 20 gauge wire this is going to be the wire that we um, bind everything with okay so you want to be sure that you have plenty of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna create a wrapped loop on one end here and then I'm going to cut my wire off of the spool. So I'm gonna use my chain nose pliers. I'm gonna come down on that wire about an inch and a half, two inches is, is probably a little too much. One thing to keep in mind though is that this is 18 gauge wire so it is a little bit, um, you know, it's, it's a thicker gauge wire which means that wire wrapping and wire wrapped loops can, um, you know, it can be a challenge for those of you who struggle with your wire wrapped loops. So if that is the issue, you don't have to do a wire wrapped loop. You can just do a simple loop. Just realize that um, it's not it's not as secure, but it will, it will totally work, okay? So I'm just gonna give the wire a bend, making that backwards seven shape. And I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers Okay, I'm gonna grab the wire so that is running between the barrel of the pliers, okay? And I'm gonna take the wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers. This is what we've got so far. Now I need to take the wire over here to the other side, but the bottom barrel of the pliers is in the way. So I can't get that wire over there. So I'm just going to kind of roll the pliers up to get that bottom barrel to now be the top barrel. And now I can take the wire all the way over to the other side. And that's gonna close up my loop. 
Now at this point, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to slide on a clasp. You don't have to, you can use a jump ring and attach your clasp later, but I'm actually going to just go ahead and slide a lobster clasp right on to my loop before I do the wire wrapping, just to kind of save a step. So I'm just popping that right into place. Okay. So again, if you're going to adjust the length of this with jump rings, you may not want to do it that way. You may want to wait and do your clasp at the end and use jump rings. All right, now I'm gonna hold on to, I gotta, gotta do the wire wrapping here. So I need to hold on to that wire loop with my, my bent chain nose pliers so that now I can come in here and take that little tail and wrap around, okay? Now I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and I'm going to trim that off. Okay. All right, so we've got one end ready to go. Okay, now we just wanna measure out the rest. So let me bring in my ruler here. I'm gonna lay this down. Just wanna take a look. So give myself about nine inches. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim off. All right, now, don't want to do a wrapped loop on the other end yet. I want to go ahead and thread my beads onto this actually. So I am just kind of using my fingers to straighten out the wire. You just want to be sure that you, and you can always use your nylon jaw pliers as well. You just want to be sure that you don't have any major kinks in the wire. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but you want to try to keep it as straight as you can. Okay. So I'm going to come over, grab my little bowl of beads here and I'm going to thread on this is really going to give you an opportunity to really ooh and ah over these beads so I'm going to thread on these kind of tangerine cracked agate beads I'm going to put two of those on I'm going to put two of these bright orange rondelles okay I'm gonna thread on one of these round beads. I think this might be my favorite bead in this mix. It's hard to pick a favorite, but I really love that blue color. So I'm gonna slide that one on. I'm gonna slide on the boho, which might actually be my favorite. I don't know, I can't decide. <laughs> but I'm gonna let that gorgeous boho be the center. And then I'm just gonna repeat the pattern. So I'm gonna thread on another one of these gorgeous blue faceted coin shaped beads, two of the bright orange rondelles, and then two of the little tangerine beads. So I was actually reading up about these little tangerine guys earlier, and it's actually just coincidental that they were in this mix because these are, and Sarah, if you're if you're paying attention, <laughs> I I may I may be getting this wrong, but I believe that these are agate beads here. Um, and not only are they agate, but they are heat treated, and that's what gives them that kind of lightning crackle to them. Do you see that? How the finish is on there. So in order to get an agate bead to do that. The agate beads are dyed and then they are heat treated and it makes that crazy cool. It looks like little lightning strikes all over it. And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't just have to be the orange ones. <laughs> like I've seen a lot of different agate beads with that treatment to them, but it makes them so unique and cool. Agate beads are one of my absolute favorites because there is absolutely a million different things that you can do to agate. I, I'm just a huge, huge fan. Okay, so I have all of my beads on here and obviously there's not a bead, enough beads to take up all of the bracelet, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wire wrap in between and around these beads um, and so I need to have plenty of room. But I do want to go ahead and do a wire wrapped loop over on the other end so that I don't have to worry that my beads are gonna fall off as we are doing the wire wrapping. So I'm gonna come down on the wire here with my chain nose pliers and I'm going to give the wire a bend and we're just going to do a wrapped loop just like I did before. So round nose pliers coming in, the wire is going up and over, roll the pliers out of the way so I can take the wire over to the other side and then I'm just going to wire wrap. Okay, and I'm going to wire wrap about three times. 
Whoops. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and I'm going to trim that off. Right, Diane, I agree. The colors are just gorgeous. Okay, so now I don't have to worry that my beads are gonna go anywhere while we are working on this. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we want to bring in a piece of the 20 gauge multicolor artistic wire. So again, remember the, ar the multicolor artistic wires, every single one of the colorways that I showed you, and there are six different ones, each one is going to come in three different gauges. So when you're shopping for the artistic multicolor wire on the Jesse James Beads website, you need to be sure um, that you're picking the right gauge, okay? Because they come in 18 gauge, 20 gauge, and 22 gauge. The 22 gauge is the smallest, the 20 is right in the middle. That's what we're gonna use to do our wire wrapping. You're gonna need about 16 to 20 inches of this. Um, and you'll probably have some left over, okay? So there was a question, let me roll back just a little bit. Um, let's see, how do you know that it will be long enough since you didn't measure with your wrist? Well, um, the truth is, is that I pre-made this project. <laughs> So since I'm not really designing on the fly, I already, I usually do my projects ahead of time, um, you know, and then make my measurements as I am, I'm pre, pre, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? As I'm, as I'm just, you know, I'm doing the prep before hand. Um, I like to, when it comes to our projects, particularly with bracelets, we don't do a whole lot of bracelet designs. And part of the reason that I don't do a lot of bracelets on our Facebook lives is for that reason in particular, because all of the measurements are going to be different. Everybody's measurements are going to be a little bit different. Um, I, I try though to stick with things and measurements that are going to give you about a seven and a half inch bracelet because seven and a half inch is really kind of like the, that's like the most common, if you will, right? Size, like a size seven shoe is like the most common. It's the same with bracelets. Seven and a half is pretty much the most common. And then you can adjust that using um, jump rings or, you know, what have you, the mock-up. Yeah, the mock-up. So, <laughs> so there you go. And, and again, the measurements are, they're never set in stone. I really always just kind of recommend that you play around and, you know, and see what works. I give you a good base place to, to like start with your jump off, but just know that like the nine inch here is going to give you about a seven and a half inch bracelet when it really comes down to it, which I know that seems really strange, but it, it works out. It works out. Okay, so give yourself about 16 to 20 inches. You're so welcome. Um, you're, gonna, you're gonna need the 20 gauge wire for this. You can use the 22 if you want to, makes no difference, but I don't really recommend using the 18 gauge wire to do this wire wrapping just because you're gonna wear your hands out big time. Hi, Linda, how are you? All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to anchor our 20 gauge wire to our 18 gauge wire. Remember, the 18 is our core wire here, okay? And to do that, I just want to give myself a little bit of a tail here, and I'm just going to wire wrap around the 18 gauge wire. I'm gonna go around about four times, something like that, okay? just to really kind of anchor that on, okay? And you'll notice I'm, I'm away from the edge here just a little bit. You wanna give yourself a little buffer in between there, okay? So that we can kind of fill in at the end with our tail. And it also gives me an opportunity to like pinch it all down and hold on to it. And I'm not like squishing our, <laughs> yeah, the prototype. <laughs> I'm not squishing our wrapped loop, okay? But this is gonna give me an opportunity to like really hold on to everything, okay? Now, this last wrap that I did, which was actually the first wrap, was a little wonky, so I, I'm gonna undo it and straighten it up a little bit. Okay, so here's, here's pretty much my pattern for this, hold on. My pattern for this is I want to do about seven wire wraps in between every single bead, okay? And I want my wire wraps to be nice and uniform. So I'm kind of squeezing those together with my chain nose pliers. Here in the beginning, keeping those wire wraps 
a nice and lined up is going to be a little hard until you get about two beads on here okay once you get a couple of beads on here it's much much easier to maneuver this wire so i've already got about four wraps i'm going to wrap around another time or two okay so i've got myself a small little section of wire wraps there looks like about six i'm going to go around one more time just for good measure okay now i'm going to slide a bead down okay when i slide the bead down i want to then i want to continue the path of the wire so my wire i don't know if you can tell or not but my wire is coming from the back right i'm coming from the back so I want to continue that path. I don't want to, I don't want to go from the back to the back. Do you see what I'm saying? I want to make sure that I'm going to the back and then I'm continuing the natural path of the wire. So in order to do that, I have to curve the wire around the outer edge of the bead, right? So I was coming from the back of the 18 gauge wire. That's our core wire going around the surface of the bead, and now I'm coming to the front of the 18 gauge wire. So that's the exact path of the wire, even if the bead was not there, right? So just keep that in mind. You just wanna follow the path even, just pretend like the beads are not there, right? If you're, if you're confused about which direction your wire should be going, okay? All right, so I've wrapped around, I'm gonna go around about six times. Okay, I've gone around about six times. I'm gonna slide another bead down. Okay, same thing, the wire is coming from the back. I'm gonna guide it around the surface of the bead to the front of the 18 gauge wire and then wrap around. And really this is, this is all there is to this. Um, we're just gonna continue doing this with all of our beads. The thing though about it is I know that I'm making it look really, really easy. Um, but that's because <laughs> I've done this a lot. I'm used to using 20 gauge wire. I'm used to using the 18 gauge wire. Um, for those of you who are new to wire wrapping, please don't get frustrated with yourself. Okay, like I said, I know I make this look easy breezy and it really is not a difficult project, but it is a lesson in patience if you are just now getting started with wire, particularly if you're not used to using heavier gauge wires, okay? Because that 20 gauge wire, it can be a little temperamental. I'm just being completely transparent with you, okay? It can be a little temperamental when you are trying to get your wire wraps lined up nice and neat. So here's what my recommendation for that is. If you are really struggling to get those wire wraps lined up nice and neat, and you feel like you are having to use the pliers a lot, and you're afraid you're gonna crack your beads, then, then give up on, <laughs> and I don't mean that like, okay, you just need to give up. What I mean is give up on keeping them nice and straight the first few times you do this just wrap around. Just get the feeling of holding an 18 gauge wire base and wrapping around it. Those wire wraps, the first couple of times you do this, doesn't have to be perfect. They don't have to all be in a line because the more you get used to the feeling of wrapping the 18 gauge wire with the 20 gauge wire, the more comfortable you're gonna be with it when you really want to um, get your wire wraps nice and neat like that, okay? So I, I don't mean give it up like just stop making jewelry. I just mean you really, you know, give yourself grace. I say that all the time, but it's totally true. Just because I make something look easy breezy doesn't mean you're gonna pick it up for the very first time and it be easy. It might be, and congratulations, that's fantastic. But if you're not used to this, practice without the beads, just take the 20 gauge wire and wrap a piece of 18 gauge wire with it and get a feeling for it before you commit to a bracelet just so that you don't cause yourself any unnecessary frustration. I hate it when people get upset and frustrated and then they walk away from it and they never pick up wire again because wire can be so much fun, but you, you have to figure out how it feels in your fingers, right? All right, so I'm gonna slide another bead up. Okay, we're just kind of continuing the pattern. So 
even though the bead shape has changed, everything is still exactly the same. I'm just going around the outer edge of the bead and then wrapping around our core wire here. And again, I'm wrapping around the core wire about six or seven times, okay? And it really shows off the gorgeous colors of that multicolor wire. After a while, you end up with steel fingers. That is 100% true. <laughs> I have really buff fingers. <laughs> My little stick fingers, they, they may look, they may look tiny, but they're, they're pretty stout and strong <laughs> from, from manhandling this crazy wire. All right, so there's another bead, right? Bring my wire, slide another bead down. We're just gonna continue, okay? And you'll see that once you've got a few beads on here and you've wire wrapped a few times, you've got a, a nice sturdy section to hold on to now. And that makes it a little easier than like holding onto this one section if you've got this big flimsy piece of wire that's trying to wobble all over. So it, it helps once you've got a few beads in place to really kind of hold everything nice and stationary. All right, I slide another bead down. Now this bead is shaped a little bit differently, right? Taking a wire across the front of the bead, just exactly the same. Doesn't matter to me that the bead is shaped differently. We don't discriminate. We love all beads <laughs> of all shapes and sizes and colors and textures. No bead left behind. Okay, so wire wrap a few in between there, then slide down another bead. Okay. And same thing. So we're just going to keep going. And you'll notice I'm going kind of slow with the wire. I'm not, I'm not speed wrapping or anything like that. I'm taking my time. Okay. Looks like I might actually run out of wire. I hope not, but. I may have undercut my wrapping wire a little bit. Yeah, it looks like I might need to add a piece of wire on. And that's okay because this is really gonna give you guys um, a chance to see how to do that. Okay, so you can see my wire, I'm getting really short and I've still got a couple more beads to go. So I'm gonna just go ahead and wrap around this guy. Okay, and I'm gonna wrap around twice. Okay, now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna trim this one off. Even though I've still got a little bit and I could go ahead and wrap it all the way, I don't want to. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off and start a new piece. Now, whenever you do that, if you need to start a new piece, one thing that you have to keep in mind is you want to add that new piece as seamlessly as possible. So you wanna be very mindful of the direction and the path of your wire, okay? You don't wanna be like wire wrapping from the back to the front and all of a sudden need to add a piece of wire and add that piece of wire going in the opposite direction. Then you're really gonna be able to tell that you had to add a, an extra piece of wire and um, you know, it, it just, it's not gonna take away too much, but you know, it might drive you crazy. Nobody else will probably notice it, but it might drive you crazy. So what I like to do is I like to see, like I can see that little, see the, shi the shiny little cut in the wire. So I just wanna lay this piece of wire kind of over the last wrap. That's kind of why I use the bead because now I can use the bead as kind of my leverage, right? Hold my wire on there and Now when I add my wire, just a couple of wraps, I can come in and kind of fuss with it a little bit. You definitely are gonna to need to use your pliers, okay? Squeeze them all together. And I want to try now to cut that wire. You can see it's over to the side just a little bit, but I'm gonna slide it right on over. I wanna to try to cut it 
so that I can kind of line those two pieces up. I don't know if you can see or not, but I lined those two pieces up. Okay, I'm gonna hold on and it may spin on you a little bit. In fact, this one is gonna spin on me a little bit until I get it kind of locked in here. So let me slide it out to the side, get the rest of our wraps. Probably shouldn't have cut that tail because now I'm having a hard time holding on to it, but that's okay because again, all of these little things is just gonna help you learn. So I'm gonna hold on to it with my pliers so that I can, I want all of the wraps, right, that need to be there. Okay, but you'll notice I'm far away. Now I can slide all that down and just wiggle it right in to where we want it to go. So it's gonna look as seamless as possible. There's gonna be a little place in your wire where, you know, the two ends meet each other, but honestly, nobody is gonna be that close to your work. And if they are and they're being, you know, snobby about it, well, you just tell them they can make their own bracelet if they want to. <laughs> But okay, so I got all of the wraps. Now I'm going to go just over the next bead. Okay, we're just gonna continue on. Do our wraps. Okay. Use your nylon hot pliers to hold. Yeah. If you don't wanna mark up the wire, definitely use your nylon jaw pliers for that. I just grabbed whatever I had. Okay. And now we're gonna do the last bead. Okay, so notice how we've got our space here and we had our space down here at the other end. So I had that pretty, pretty perfectly, um, <laughs> then you backhand it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you say, oh yeah, you do it then, buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> goodness gracious. Lost me for a minute. That was more than a minute. My goodness. Facebook. Okay, so I know it is frustrating. You and me both, Kelly. So I've got a little bit of space here at the end where we're finished. And remember where we started, we had a little bit of extra room too. So we're just gonna fill that in with the wire wraps. That's why we left ourselves a little bit of, um, of wire up here for our tail and then down here at the bottom as well. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep wire wrapping until I meet up with the wraps of our wrapped loop on this end down here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna come in and, ooh, yeah, Terry says sometimes when she makes this bracelet, she takes the wire and goes back the other direction. That looks really cool too. Yeah, using the wire to go back the other way, I like that. All right, so I'm just gonna finish off up here. My wire looks like it's gonna be a little short, but, Lucky for us, <laughs> we can add. We can always fill in when we need to. We've done that more than once, no problem. Just do it again. That's the great thing about wire is, you know, you really can make it do exactly what you want it to do. You just come in there, put it where you want it, trim off the ends, right? Nobody's ever gonna know. And if they do, well, you know what Tina said. <laughs> All right, I do need to squeeze this guy down a little bit. Give Facebook a Snickers. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, so I'm gonna trim off right there. All right, so we've wire wrapped the entire length of our bracelet and 
we've already got our clasp on one end, depending on how you want to do it, right? But now we kind of need to shape this into an actual bracelet because up until this point, it's just been kind of a, a long straight line. So the cool part is that you've got that 18 gauge wire as your core. So you really can just shape it into the shape that you want it to be, right? And you don't have to use a mandrel or anything. I mean, you, you absolutely can if you want to, but you don't have to use a mandrel because that 18 gauge wire is not super, super thick, you know? It's, it's gonna give you a good structure, but you don't really have to fuss with it in order to get your bracelet into an actual bracelet shape. Now, you can just attach your clasp over to your wrapped loop on the other end if you want to, or you can add jump rings here. I'm just gonna leave mine just like it is. I don't feel like I need a jump ring for that. So my wrapped loops are my actual connection points for my bracelet. But I do wanna add extra dangles to this because I, I really love, <laughs> I really love all the extra movement. You guys know, those of you who've watched me for a while know that I always have to add dangles to things and charms and fun little extra things. So I'm gonna add one of these awesome little tassels. I love these little ribbon tassels, they're so fun. And then these hearts, these little check glass hearts, I can't not add those, they're so, so cute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the two little hearts and I'm gonna put those on head pins. And then I'm just gonna attach all of these with a couple of jump rings, okay? So this part's just kinda easy peasy, but just, you know, just a little extra flair to this. So I'm gonna take one of these heart beads, just gonna drop it right down onto a head pin. Again, you can do a wrapped loop here. I'm gonna do a wrapped loop, but you can do a simple regular loop if you want to. I know, me and movement, I gotta have extra dangles. Dangles are the best. <laughs> I want dangles on everything. Dangles and fringe. I just, I don't know. I'm one of those. <laughs> it's funny because I don't have fringe lamps, but man, I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I had fringe lamps everywhere. I don't think my family agrees or feels the same way that I do, but... I, I really, <laughs> I really love extra movement on things. When I was a kid, my mom, she had the coolest, just the coolest suede jacket and it had fringe on it like, you know, it was like hippie fringe. But to me, it was like cowboy fringe. I didn't see it as hippie fringe. I saw it as cowboy fringe. And so I would get it out of her closet and wear it and my favorite thing to do was like to flap my arms and to spin around in circles so that fringe would go flying all over the place i'm still like that as an adult it's just with jewelry like <laughs> put on as much dangly sparkly goodness as possible and flap your arms and spin around in a circle <laughs> that makes me happy <laughs> All right, so I've got little wrapped loops here on my hearts, and now I'm just gonna attach these with some jump rings. And I'm gonna attach them on the opposite side of where my clasp is. So my clasp attaches over here. I don't like to hang my dangles and fringe here because I don't want um, to accidentally grab those when I go to like attach my clasp. So I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna hang them from this loop over here, okay? So I'm going to use a six millimeter jump ring and I'm just gonna open up thread on my tassel. I'm gonna hook it to that wrapped loop Close that back, okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my little hearts, but I'm gonna use four millimeter jump rings. And since there's not a, a lot of room on that wrapped loop, I'm actually gonna add these to that six millimeter jump ring that our tassel is hanging from, just because I don't wanna crowd out that space too much. So see, I just added that to that six millimeter jump ring. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other heart. Yes, oh my gosh, when I was a teenager, I had a beaded curtain in front of my door. It was the coolest. It was so cool. I've always been obsessed with beads, guys. I, beads, fringe, fringe, tassels, all of those things. <laughs> 
even when I didn't realize what that obsession was. All right, so there you go. We've got ourselves a little bangle bracelet here and it really was not super hard to make. And with a little bit of practice, you guys can put these together pretty quickly. Uh, for those of you who are seasoned and are really, you know, you've got lots of lots of practice using wire you're not going to have any problems with this whatsoever those of you who are beginners you absolutely can do this just give yourself grace be a little bit more patient um so the question was let's see roll back what color wire am i using so i'm using the multicolor artistic wire and i'm using the one in blue red and gold and our bead mix that went with it is adventure awaits and i do have beads left over you guys so we made a really cool bracelet and i still have enough beads left over that i could make more bracelets to go with this one so i can make myself a little stack if i wanted to or i could make some earrings to match as well so guys, these little mini mixes, I know I say it a lot, but I, it's always worth repeating that the mini mixes are only mini in size this way. They're always jam packed full of beads. We still have a ton of stuff left over to play with, right? We use, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 beads and a tassel. And we still have a whole little container of beads left over. That's pretty darn good. Just saying, just saying. All right, so that is our project for today. I'm gonna turn you guys around and we shall say our goodbyes. And then I will be off to go eat lettuce wraps. I've been looking forward to those all day long. <laughs> all right, the only other thing I would rather have than lettuce wraps is tacos. <laughs> but it's not Tuesday. Maybe I'll get tacos tomorrow for Taco Tuesday. All right, guys, so here's our bracelet. How cute is that? The colors, the wire, it just, it's just the perfect combination. Really, really the perfect combination. I love this colorway. A lot of people feel like, I know some people don't love fall colors in jewelry because it is a lot of neutrals. Browns, grays, tans, blacks, and a lot of navy. If that's too drab for you, this is a great color palette for fall orange, blue, gold, red. You don't have to look at fall color palettes as being boring or drab. This is a great one. This is a really, really beautiful mix that still has the bright pops of color, but it does have that fall feeling to it. But you certainly could wear this all the way through the year, right? I mean, there's no shame in that. <laughs> <laughs> I wear gray all year. I love gray. I, I have a whole closet full of gray t-shirts. So <laughs> you guys have probably seen every gray t-shirt that I own. But yeah, so there you go. And you can see on one side, you don't see the wire going across the beads. But if I flip it over, you can see the wire coming across the surface of the beads. So it's kind of like having two bracelets in one, just depending on which way it falls on your wrist. So there you go. All right, guys, that is it for me. Thank you so much for sticking around. Thanks for putting up with Facebook shenanigans. It is always something I know. I don't know why it just is. Facebook just doesn't like me. I'm just thankful that you guys do because you hang around <laughs> regardless. Oh my gosh, my comments got frozen. So I have like, I've missed so many comments here. Let me roll back just for a second before y'all go anywhere. Oh, you're so welcome, guys really pretty thank you i'm glad mm, roast with potatoes and carrots that sounds really good oh karen says she's going to try this with one of her mini mixes i can't wait to see it be sure that you post guys if you are not part of the secret stash group please come join the secret stash group on the jesse james speeds facebook page and make sure that you uh, post your pictures of your creations we want to see them Want to see all of the awesome things that you're doing with your Jesse James Speeds? If you've got questions, it's a great place. It's a really great resource. There's tons of people there with lots of knowledge, and they're more than happy to share and um, support each other. We don't have any cattiness in our group, and I am every day so grateful and thankful for that. So, um, you know, know that if you're a first time poster, people are going to lift you up. Nobody is going to be like, ugh what are you doing? <laughs> that is never going to happen. And if they are, they can go somewhere else. They can take a seat. <laughs> we won't let them do that. So 
All right, guys, that's it. Have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. I will see you guys again on Wednesday at 1 p.m. with another fun project for you guys. It will be a design on the fly using this week's weekly deals. Don't forget about those. They are good until, not until tomorrow, until next Monday. So you've got all week to shop with the weekly deals. Don't forget what those are. They are over on the website if you do happen to forget. And while you're there, sign up, make your account, get your loyalty points and stay in the know. Have a wonderful night and I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye.